Hello, Ling341. Uh, we're going to move on today from vowels and start talking about the acoustics of fricatives, the acoustics and articulation of fricatives. Acoustically, though, um, fricatives are kind of uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum from vowels in that they're not really, um, or they don't have to be periodic, and instead they are turbulent sounds. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means as we go. Um, so even though, <coughs> excuse me, they, um, they operate differently. We can kind of walk into fricatives uh, by drawing on something that we already know about, which is source filter theory. So, um, so far we've considered the following source filter configuration where we have a source of voicing at the vocal folds. Then then the filter is the resonating vocal tract above that. And what we're gonna change here is what's going on um, with the source. So instead of having voicing at the vocal folds, uh, instead, what if we tried ha opening up the glottis, that is not voicing, uh, and then increasing airflow so that instead of the periodic voicing, we get audible turbulence as air passes through the vocal folds. So just crank it up and you get the sort of going on. What happens? I kind of gave you a clue by making the sound ahead of time. Normally I don't do that in class, but these are special circumstances. And you might be able to guess that if you produce a sound that way, you get something called whispering. <sighs> something like that. You don't need a voice. You can just talk like this. That's whispering. We do this all the time. So when we do this, we're using the same vocal track filter as we do for vowels, but we're using an entirely different source. We're changing from a periodic uh source to a turbulent ah uh, source. And we can still figure out what's being said. And I'm lucky that I could give this lecture this way because you can still hear me. I don't have to give it in a big like oh, lecture hall where the whispering would get lost. But that's how we perceive speech is by focusing more on the filter. And we just notice that the source is different because I'm whispering. And it's useful because it's quieter. But I can give you a little example of what this looks like in a spectrogram. This is had produced uh, by Peter Latifoget again. This is the voiced version. Had. This is the whispered version. Had. I think I'm gonna crank that up a little bit. Had. Had. Okay, and so we can see um, a couple different things here in the voice version. These should look like uh, at least one of, this should look like at least one of the uh, spectrogram samples that you saw in the spectrogram matching exercise. Uh, but this is the vowel. We've got these vertical lines here, which represent the uh, single opening uh, phase of the um, glottal cycle when you voice. Uh, and then here at the end, so these are the formants that we can see um, going through uh, the voiced portion of this utterance. Head. Uh, at the end here, they kind of cut out. This is the stop portion for duh. And then we get these two spikes here at the end, which is the release burst for the duh had. Um, so we'll kind of set this aside for a second and focus more on this, which looks like something we've seen before, F1, F2, F3, there's even F4 up here. And this is the hub part at the very beginning. Uh, and you can kind of see those formants extending into the first part here. Here's F1, here's F2, F3, because like I said, or like I whispered, it's the same filter, even though we're using a different source. So we don't get those consistent periodic vibrations of the vocal folds, we get turbulence. And what turbulence looks like, you can see a little bit better over here in the whispered version. <sighs> Uh, it's just kind of random noise um, all the way up and down the frequency scale. There's some energy kind of at all um, points in the frequency scale. Uh, and then when we have a vowel production, we see certain parts of that frequency scale get intensified. So again, these are the regions of the frequency scale, which kind of intensify based on the length and the shape of the vocal tract. So we get more intensity here, F1, F2, F3. Um, and it's a little fainter here because we're comparing it to uh, what we see in the vowel, but it's the same structure. And we can perceive it as the same word, Head. even though we notice it's said differently. Head. Okay, um, so what we're producing here, you can also think of as a glottal fricative, whispering as a glottal fricative, or maybe you can even think of it as a voiceless vowel. So in when you're producing a huh, a glottal fricative, a voiceless gl glottal fricative, sorry, <coughs> or excuse me, rather, um, the sound source is the turbulence that the airflow creates as it passes through the vocal folds. Uh, so the IPA lists two sounds as glottal fricatives. One is the voiceless H and the other is the voiced uh, And I'll give you a, a canned example of that in a second. 
So um, normally I write on the board, I keep score. Um, today is going to be primarily kind of a fricatives around the world, a little tour of fricatives lecture. Um, and so normally I would write these all on the board, but um, this is already going to be on YouTube. So you can just write them down if you want or look them up in the IPA chart as we go. Uh, the voiceless glottal fricative symbol we know. It's just this regular H. The um, voiced one has a little curly Q on the top bar for the H to de denote that um, it's voiced. Uh, but like I said before, the filter of both these sounds is basically the same vocal tract shapes that we find in vowels. Uh, so in a sense, H is a voiceless vowel. And you can also think about uh, voiced H, maybe like a breathy voiced vowel. <sighs> um, to tell you a little bit more about what I mean with that, you can look at H in different vowel contexts. So it's a voiceless vowel, and it's going to have different formant frequencies uh, depending on which vowel it's kind of co-articulated with. So these are the words heed and had <clears throat> and we have the h part here at the beginning and then the vowel part in the middle so heed uh e is a high front vowel it's going to have a low f1 high f2 had is a low front vowel so we have a high f1 and a relatively high f2 even though it's still not quite as high as we get for e had uh, and we can kind of see a little bit better in had what's going on with the formants in the H part of this at the beginning. Uh, so you can kind of see the extension of formants here, here, and here, and then it fades out a little bit up at the top. Um, there's not much strength here for the H to work with um, for when it precedes E. Uh, you might produce the H and heed um, sort of like what's called a palatal fricative um, because it's a really narrow constriction that has to, the air has to get through. Uh, so they can, that can kind of suck out some of the intensity, but you can see some formants here up at the higher end. They're basically matching the formants that you get in the vowel itself. And I'm gonna play you just the um, H portions of these um, fricatives uh, or these words uh, themselves. And you can hear the difference in the two H's even though we write them the same way and normally think about them the same way uh, when we're writing out a phonetic transcription. All right, this is not cooperating. Um, my cover is blown. Let me try it this way. Okay, so this is the you can hear in the heed context, you're producing that H. In had, you're producing They're different sounds, even though we typically transcribe them the same way. Okay, so normally uh, what I would do in class is uh, take a look at these vowel spectrograms and then say what um, words are being spoken here. So I'm actually gonna have you look at these briefly. Um, I might actually stop the recording just so you can think about it. Uh, but the way you can kind of derive it is by looking at the formant structure of the vowels. And you'll notice these formants kind of extend, the intense parts extend into the H at the beginning. But there's an H vowel D uh, word being produced in each one of these spectrograms. Which vowel are we producing in each spectrogram? And then after you figure out the answer to that, we'll come back and we'll play the H parts of them. And you can hear that the H's are not exactly the same. Okay. Have fun.